if the Gita is there, focus only on Gita. All else is just stories. Gita is not a story. Gita is a philosophical document of the highest order. It is not storytelling. Yarn. As you said earlier, that uh, knowledge has to precede action. Yeah. And this knowledge, uh, you mean that this knowledge is the knowledge of the factual state of oneself as the ego, unfulfilled ego. The knowledge before action has to be of the actor itself. Ah. Uh. But it's a constantly moving thing, right? It can't be otherwise, possible. otherwise you cannot have knowledge. Uh. This is very dynamic knowledge that you can attain only in the flux of life. It's like measuring the speed of water flow. If you want to m- measure the speed of flow, you have to measure it during the flow. In the flow, no? You cannot stop the water or freeze the water and then try to measure the speed. Similarly, life is a constant movement. So life can be known only in the movement. Hmm. I guess that that's that has been confusing me a little because Uh, when I came back to Finland, I was actually, at first, it felt a little depressing because I had the notion that coming to India would like, that something would happen, you know. Something will? Happen. Like my motivation or something would get a spike up. But then I realized that I had a notion that that kind of a motivation could come from somewhere outside of me. It just took me back to the same fundamental that nothing outside of me can inspire me to, like, really work. This is going a little off track, but I still want to say this. Uh, But, no, it's just funny because I'm in the same situation as when I was before coming to India. But now it seems that I still have work to do in this situation. I guess it's then just fine because... See, how can soil and roads and brick and mortar give you fresh insight? What do you mean by India? India is just a notion. Hmm? When you come to a notion, you will miss the ocean. No? Hmm? So what do you... What do you mean that you expected that when you will come to India, you will return with your uh, inner gates flung open? What exactly is India for you? What do you mean? You you probably came to me. Right. And and that nearness is not uh, something just physical or geographical. If anything was to be thrown open, that could have happened only if there was a a willingness and, uh, and a realization that it is not the country that counts, yeah. but the consciousness. Uh. Hmm? So, so that's the thing that happens with a lot of people from the West. They come to India thinking that the land itself will do something magical to them. The land will do nothing. In many senses, the country you are in is a better place than India. In many material senses at least. No? You know that very well. Pollution, overpopulation, so many other things. You are already a better place there than in India. What makes India special then, at least for some people, the right company. 
the right environment, the right process of self-inquiry. Now you have to then ask yourself, how much of self-inquiry did really happen? How much vulnerability did you really espouse? And it's a choice always to open up, to come close and say, I want to speak out, I want to confess, I want to talk about myself, not about the experiences I'm having in India. What is the point in coming to India and, uh, you know, waxing eloquent about a particular uh, wedding ceremony one sees or a particular thing one sees on the road or a particular thing one experiences in the apartment? Is that what one comes to India for? No. One comes to India to probe himself, to know himself. Now ask yourself how much of that did you really choose to happen? It cannot happen on its own. It just cannot happen on its own. Hmm. There is a process and the process is Upanishadik. The process is of deep discussion and deliberation. The process involves opening up. The process involves coming to the teacher, talking nothing about this and that. Talking only about oneself. Who am I? What my life's challenges are? What do I do the entire day? How my mind functions? Uh, what my fears, my insecurities are, what do I want? If you talk of this, then of course India can bless you with something very magical. But India's blessings cannot be foisted upon someone. One has to first of all be prepared for those blessings. One has to first of all be deeply in love for, with and desperate for those blessings. So the more you exhibit your desperation, the more madly you are in love with realization, the more you will find India is working for you. Otherwise India is just an overcrowded place. Not very different from any other place in the world. <clears throat> But, I mean, I kind of thought about this on my own, but it did require coming there, you know. But I had to say that, uh, as I said, that there was just too much confusion on my side. I sometimes felt that I didn't know what I was doing there. It was just like... It was, it was your virgin attempt. <laughs> Try again. Yeah. Try again. Huh? You'll, you'll have to make yourself land in another India. India is not one thing. India is a million different things. And they are hierarchical. There can be the greatest India you meet. And there can be a very mediocre India you land at. It depends on your choice. What do you want to take away from here? Body identification, Julius, body identification. When one is identified with the body, which is our fundamental nemesis, then one is identified with everything that is physical. The body is our basic physicality, no? And when there is body identification, then there is identification with soil, because the body is soil. So one thinks that by landing in a particular geography, something important will happen that is akin to thinking that the body is important. If the body is important, then land is important. Huh? If the body is who you are, then the land is the guru. And then you will miss the guru. By the way, I was seeing it happen all the time. I know. I was seeing it day by day how you were missing it. I know. Me too. Oh, I know. You are already all knowing. Huh? <laughs> you know so much. Yes. yes, yes. Too much. <laughs> yeah. But it had to go that way, I guess. Obviously, obviously. You see, it's necessary. It's necessary yeah. that one realizes the immensity 
of the possibility and one realizes how easy it is to miss it how one can be very very close and yet far from being intimate yeah and i mean i felt bad for you know i just felt like i was wasting your time there all the time it was kind of my time is wasted when i do not get to solve real problems if i am solving real problems that's the best utilization of my time so could you come up with something real i would have loved it mm. but if i'm not coming up with anything real does that mean that my lifestyle is not what else possible? what else is it that matters to you julius what is what else matters to anybody climate change huh what else is it that matters to anybody why do we want to talk about anything else under the sun it's your life that's the fundamental unit of your challenge hmm everything arises from there even the global problems come from our own misled minds no so one has to talk of one's mind that's all that is there to talk of think now of all the days you spent here and think of what you spent them doing and then you will be surprised big time how could i miss it so completely so near yet so far that pure that one thing hai ha you know the upanishads put it this way it's a beautiful quote tad dure tad avantike hmm near and far that's near that's very far very very near yet very very far i have people who are with me since years and they are very very far one day when they'll be even physically far that's when probably they'll wonder much like you how did we miss it so completely how did we waste all our years yeah but it, it was actually funny talking of the distance now because uh when i got sick at the later part of the trip i got most out of the session i was watching from afar I don't know why but in the session yeah. hall it was really yeah. hard for me to Exactly that's what that's oh. what Nearness is such a deception Nearness is such a deception It makes you miss even that which you were receiving when afar There in Europe you are probably receiving more than what you did sitting right in front of me yeah definitely yeah because you thought that you were near hmm? that's what the the senses uh, make us feel i'm already near if i'm already near why do i need to be attentive if i'm already near then i'm eligible to expect a miracle and the miracle is not happening so i am frustrated but you are not near at all except in the physical sense right at this moment there is greater intimacy than there was over the period of that month hmm? because you see it is not the body that matters it is mental closeness and availability that matters that's why i asked you about what constitutes india for you the airport 
the city, the roads, the apartment. What do you mean by India? Did you come to have a taste of the soil? Hmm? Did you want to have an experience of the newly built airport? That's why you landed here? That's what we forget. Just as we don't remember why we took birth in the first place, we also forget why we have come to a place at all. Hmm? You look at the people around. Do you think they realize why they stand born? No, we don't know. We don't know the purpose of life. Just as we don't know the purpose of life, we also do not know or we rather forget the purpose of our visit or journey. And we just get lost. And then we wonder why such disappointment? Why am I returning empty-handed? Just as we die empty-handed, we also take off empty-handed. 